Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I think I'll attach this to me so I won't have to walk around carrying it all day. How are you today? Grateful? Is that it? Everybody's just grateful. Nothing else? Blessed. Blessed. Joyous. Joyous. Wonderful. Wonderful. Magnificent. Who? Grateful. Awesome. Lovingly. Ah. Happy. Yep. <laughs> She's yep. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you are? I'm excited today to celebrate my dad's anniversary. You are celebrating what? Oh, your father's 80th birthday. All right. Wonderful. All right. Okay, you're going to be handing out invitations at the door, right? <laughs> well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and do what? Be glad in it because we're here. We're letting that light, that love that God is within us just we're sharing it with each other. And as we do every Sunday, we open our service in prayer. There are some that are mending their net right now, and if you know of them in your lives, call out their names into the universe because God already knows, but we're just going to fortify that. So let me open up in prayer, and then I will uh, leave that door open for us to uh, call out those names. Father, Mother, God, we say, close your eyes for a moment. Father, Mother, God, we say thank you right now for life and this more abundantly. Thank you for this day that, we, that has never been here before and we're an empty page before us and as we're just writing our day as we go through this day in love, in peace, in joy, in happiness because your light shines in and through us and we share this love and light with all that we come in contact with. And we're blessing all those that are home or in an institution mending their nets today and we bless them because we know that you're right there with them as you are here with us because you are omnipresent everywhere even the present and we say thank you calling off those names Bill Cartwright blessing blessing Shirley blessing USA blessing Yes, blessings. Blessings. God bless. And we're blessing this day. And as we get still for a moment and bless ourselves, we tend to leave ourselves out because we're constantly looking out into the world. But right now, while we're here in the midst in this holy sanctuary, we're blessing ourselves right here, right now, in the silence. From the crown of your head to the tip ends of your feet. And we all say together, Amen. Wonderful. And our first hymn, Lord, can you turn me down a bit? <laughs> uh, it's on page, well, it says an insert, but we do have it in our books. 
but you have an insert in your uh, bulletin there. I'm ready for a what? All right, do you know that you are the miracle? Are you ready for you? Huh? All right, think about that. <laughs> All right. And we're going to sing it twice. Yep. I'm ready for a miracle. Ready for a miracle. I'm ready for a miracle. Your mind. I got my mind in two for one, ready to experience one. I'm ready for a miracle today. My mind is open, ready to receive it. My heart is open, open all the way. I do. bulletin, our statement of being. Won't you please stand and affirm this for ourselves? Together. God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Who are you? I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And turning to the back of your bulletin and affirming our purpose and Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> Together, the purpose of Unity East Church is to teach the universal principles of truth as taught and demonstrated by Jesus Christ and interpreted by unity. Now, our mission is to rediscover our guiding spirit of God's presence within us and willingly demonstrate his creative purpose in our lives. Isn't that powerful? willingly demonstrate his creative purpose in our lives. And the song that I'd like for you all to share next is Oneness on page 211. Oneness. For we are all children of God. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, God. I'm 
nothing to fear. I'll now let go. There's nothing to fear. I'll now let go. There's nothing to fear. I'll now let go. I'll now let go. There's nothing to fear. What else do you realize? I realize there's only one kind. I realize there's only one kind. I realize there's only one kind. I realize. give them a big hug and say good morning one next See, I said, turn to your neighbor. I didn't say the whole church. <laughs> it's all good. Hello? I mean, you know, love it is. You know, when you get to hug them. And we want to say happy birthday to Nancy up there in the balcony. Uh huh. Huh? Yeah, well, let's sing happy birthday to what? Stand. Spirit today, thank you, God. All right, we are in the month of what? July. Who lie? July. Okay. Would someone like to read our daily word? Some visitor, maybe. We're talking about divine order today. Just look that over for a minute. I'll call you up in a minute. You got your eyes on or whatever? No? <laughs> uh -huh. All right, but while I bring you up to snuff here, 
Uh, we're in the month of July, and the power for this month, each month we have one of the religious uh, disciples that uh, follow Jesus, and this is the month of uh, understanding. That's the principle that we'll be t- I've been talking about all month, and we will continue that, because as we understand things, we understand it better by and by. And the disciple is Thomas, doubting Thomas, but Thomas asks questions. So, and then the color is gold. Uh, got some gold on my watch. <laughs> as close as I can get this morning. Uh, the physical location is in the front brain. Um, as you look at your bulletin at the bottom there, just to understand, un- uh, understand understanding a little better, let's affirm this together. Understanding is our faculty by which we receive enlightened insight and gain direct perceptions of truth. It is our faculty of spiritual intelligence, spiritual intelligence. Thank you, God. Now, we just had movie night Friday, and it was wonderful. Uh, uh, the joyful noise with Dolly Parton and Latifah. <laughs> it was a wonderful movie. And so choir, uh, after looking at that movie, you were, we have to look at a little choreography and a little some. And what? Ah, okay, she was here. She enjoyed it. <laughs> and then we had dinner afterwards. So you come and, and have a wonderful fellowship with the, each other and then have a movie and dinner. Uh, Sunday, we have a town hall meeting after service. Uh, Bobby, is that so? Is Walter here? Okay, wonderful. All right. Uh, blood pressure screening after service. Is that so? Yeah, that won't work. You know, can't be in two places at one time unless you're going to check our blood pressure in here while we're in here having our town meeting. Okay, see, see. All right, uh, on the fourth Sunday, we have our Edgar Casey group that meet and discuss some of the miracles that he has uh, uh, been a part of. Uh, then uh, the August the 3rd, we will have our ice cream Sunday. Uh, $3 for adults and children are free. Volunteers needed. Did you want to say something on that? Yeah, greeters. Mm-hmm. That's a part of it. ushers, greeters to welcome uh, folks and then someone to do our streaming on one of the Sundays. Go ahead. Well, I signed Who up. Who are you? I'm Marion Upper. <laughs> Dancer. And I signed up to be a greeter and found that I was the only one on the list, so I told I was in charge. So <laughs> <laughs> this morning we, we uh, sang the song about the, the miracles, so I'm looking for four to five miracles to sign up and help me. It's really easy. I think it's really important to be at the door to greet people, to say hello to new people coming in and to our regular parishioners. I think it's a real important thing. And this is just for the single ladies you sign up, remember, if a single man walks through the door, you get first dibs. <laughs> so, and all you have to wear is your name tag, so, and you don't have to bring anything. So it's going to be real easy, so um, I'll be out there in the lobby after church, and please come and sign up with me. Male or female would be helpful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I came one Sunday morning, and nobody was at the door, so I stood there and got all the hugs before service and was able to say, welcome, come on. Wonderful. You don't have to go to college to do this. <laughs> okay, very easy. <laughs> okay, now please note as uh, we're streaming our services and good morning streaming family on that camera there. So if you want to see the services for the last month, uh, you can tune in to our, let's get the card out in the lobby there next to our prayer chest uh, and get that and computer you can see any of the services all month anytime you want to see them uh, but if you're um, coming up please come around this way so you don't block the view of the of people at home watching the service ongoing classes we have meditation class every Monday evening here in our children's church from 6 30 to 7 30 and each week it's a different one so something is happening all the time and teaching uh, each other how to meditate uh, tai Chi on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Um, uh, this adult share Tai Chi, so you're not 
you know, doing a lot of extraneous movements that you may have to call EMS afterwards, so it's safe. And then Bible on Thursday, we're finishing up uh, Revelation, so we'll be starting a new book uh, in two weeks. But come on, we haven't finished with Revelations yet. And it's a wonderful experience to understand all those symbols that we've been afraid of all our lives because we didn't know what they meant. But please be bringing in your toilets, your articles for the homeless that are in shelters, and that will be uh, taken to them on the last Monday of every month. Uh, and Greg, you have something going on at your house this week? See, now I just did go round, and here he comes running up the... <laughs> See, you all don't listen. <laughs> Give him the mic. I forgot to bring the maps last Sunday, and I said I would bring them this time. Uh, this is a map for the, our third annual uh, summer party uh, at our house, and somebody said they came last year thinking it was going to be a church party, and they got there and found out it's a party party. Ah. It's one of those you have to work hard not to have fun. Okay, and we've got all kinds of things going on, uh, games to play, uh, horseshoes for the men. And yes, Mike, we did take the shoes off the horse this year, so they're not as hard to throw. <laughs> uh, how about the women? We've got something for the women. How many are into a real hard, uh, hardy game of uh, soccer? Nobody? I, di I didn't think that was going to work, so I'm going to have to call mm. Peggy and tell her to cancel. We had 20 uh, young uh, South American professional soccer players coming, but they were going to escort the ladies around and show them a good time, but we'll cancel that since you don't have an interest. Now, you are in church. Yes, that's true. <laughs> He's using his imagination. <laughs> but it's a good time, a lot of fun. We have the maps here, Robert, uh, in Warren at 10 Mile Orion. Everybody's welcome to come, bring a dish to pass, but bring some fun with you, and we'll have a good time. Thank you. And you have karaoke, too, if you feel like singing. Karaoke? Yeah. Uh, in fact, I heard the teens will stop by. Uh -huh. uh, Gene Pitney might be there. Oh. Uh, I heard Jake's out on work release for the weekend uh, <laughs> for the Blues Brothers, so they might be there on that day. Huh? Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Oh. Yeah, there's all kinds of things. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, come on out. <laughs> Give him a hand. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and let the church know if you are ill, hospitalized, or need assistance. One of our members had a stroke yesterday, and I just heard about it this morning. Okay. So, uh, Bill Cartwright. Okay. He just came back to town, and, and he's partially paralyzed on one side. He's in Ford Hospital. I'll be going out to see him after service but keep Bill and Dottie in prayer because uh, they've been married a long time. When something happens to one person, it's the family, you know, it's a relationship. So keep them in prayer uh, because we know prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. You know, because we had, uh, I'm in Heart of the Hills, and one of our players uh, had a health challenge, and we went out and prayed with him, and by the time I got there, he was sitting up just throwing food in his face left and right, uh, so, you know, whereas before he was just really on the dark side, but prayer changes things, and love it is. And we've had many people in this congregation that have been healed from the prayer and the love that we share with each other. Thank you, God. But now there's something that also happens that we need to help ourselves, because every day, in every way, I am better and better. For only God's good happens to me and through me. All right, you see, they know it already. So the new folk, it's very easy. We do choreography here. All right, so get it. It's in your bulletin. We're going to do it three times. One for the Father, one for the Son, and you know who the third one is for, right? Holy Spirit. Got it. All right, together. Every day, in every way, I am better and better for only God's good happens to me and through me got it every day in every way I am better and better for only God's good happens to me and through me once more every day in every way I am better and better 
For only God's good happens to me and through me. Ooh, I felt that. I felt that. I felt that. Yes, yes, yes. Now my truth, this is personal. My truth, look in the bulletin so that you will be able to recite these words because there's power in the spoken word. You are affirming this for yourself. Together, there is nothing I can't be, nothing I can't do, nothing I can't have. I am guided. I do have the power. The universe, God, is conspiring on my behalf. Do that one again. The universe, God, is conspiring on my behalf. I am the creator and not the reactor of my life. Do that one again. I am the creator and not the reactor of my life. The genius within me is released. I am now fulfilling my destiny. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Move this up higher. That's Nancy. She's on the ball. <laughs> now I would like uh, someone to come up and share with us our word for today, daily word. This is Gail. <laughs> I caught her at the door. I said... <laughs> Yeah, well, hold that close to you so we can hear you. Not way out there. Uh huh. What's the word? Divine order. All right. I joyously participate in the orderly unfoldment of good. Yes. Divine order is always at work. Yes. It is the eternal, requisite process by which all things come into existence. My very life is evidence of the graceful movement of God. Each one of us is an essential part participant in spirit orderly creation. We have each we each have a role to play in the creative process, the dynamic and continuing manifestation of God's infinite good. Yes. I surrender yes. to divine order by aligning myself with spirit. Nancy, we hear you. Through a regular practice of prayer and meditation, I intentionally open my life as a channel through which God's order, love, and light radiate into the world. Yes. Ever since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things he has made. Romans 1.20. All right, give her a hand. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> That's Gail. She's a part of Heart of the Hills, the play acting group. Not play acting, but anyway, the players group that we sing with. She tap dances and sings and does all those wonderful things. And her husband, that's Ray Charles over there. Okay, when he puts those glasses on and sings and he dances, and quite a group, quite a group. And we've got quite a few people in our congregation that are part of that group uh, that have appeared in several of the plays that we've been in. And either they come and usher, Leo used to be uh, in that group, and just wonderful, 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 wonderful people. <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> she's on the phone. She doesn't know that she's up in the upper part of the room. <laughs> the voice cares. <laughs> All right. Are you through with the call? <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, we heard every word you said. <laughs> We, we laugh here, it's okay, no problem. 
but we are next uh, getting ready for our meditation. And I'd like for you to take everything out of your laps and get comfortable. And just taking a deep breath and gently close your eyes as we sing the Lord's Prayer. stillness of this moment, taking a deep, relaxing, rich breath. Feel it coming into your nostrils and going up to the top of your head. And with your marvelous imagination, you can see with your eyes closed because that's just a part of you innately given to you. And see that breath coming down as a healing essence moving down through your brain and as you give your brain the command relax there's nowhere to go nothing to do but just be right here right now and as you see that breath coming down through your brain relaxing every particle every membrane See it relaxing your ears, your eyebrows, your eyes. Then your nose, and as you take in another deep, deeper, relaxing, rich, rich, life breath. And as the first one is continuing on down your body, relaxing everything that it touches, this second breath is starting at the top of your head and coming down to pick up any residual tightness, tension, weariness, and just moving it on down your body temple. Let me say thank you, God. Thank you for life today and this more abundantly. And God, we realize that we're letting ourselves be drawn into sometimes the disorder around us but we know to become quiet then to give our full attention to you in the midst of any kind of storm that may be going on in our lives and out of this quiet time a realization of 
calm rises within us. And the people, the noise, the confusion that seemed right in our face just drifts away. And we feel such relief that we breathe easier. And we begin to relax even more and feel the tension within our arms or shoulders or wherever it is just melting away. And as we take in that third rich, relaxing, deep breath, and letting it do its wonderful work, the miracle work that it is, moving down throughout our body temple, just pulling like a magnet any tension, any darkness within us, all those negative ideas or thoughts that we may have had about somebody or even ourselves, just pulling that into the healing essence of that breath that is moving throughout your body temple, moving it down, 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 all the way down to your feet and out into the floor and out into the ground underneath the church. And as you continue to breathe normally, Hear these words. God, I am grateful. I'm grateful for the people in my life. I'm grateful for the love that you are in me, that I'm able to share this with myself first. For the word says, love yourself as your neighbor, but love yourself first. And as you are that beacon of love and light, those that you come in contact with just has to feel it because it's so, it's a vibration, it's energy, it's love itself. And as you send out love, that love within you just heals things, relationships, experiences in your body, temple. Love does. And we acknowledge that power of God is working for greater good than we can even imagine. And we trust the order, the harmony, the perfect timing of divine order, which is the first order of the universe, order. And we attach divine to it, God, order. And we say, thank you, God, as we sit quietly in the presence as divine order just encompasses us with the spirit of love just overshadowing us in the quietness of our soul thank you God thank you in the stillness of this moment within me within us now thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. And as we come back to this place, space and time, taking in a strong, deep breath with conviction and feeling that breath just moving throughout our temple, animating every function of our being, as we gently open our eyes and sing our congregational response, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. i
Diana Turner. There is a goal sheet within your material there, and it is called the Invocation Prayer. And this is by Charles Fillmore, our co-founder of Unity. And he shares, I'll wait till you pull it out. Got it? It's on the back of Shirley the Presence. All right, we let's share this together. We are now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of light, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit. In thy divine wisdom now, erase our mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to thy law. Amen. Thank you. My talk title today is Step Ladder of Fulfillment. Now what does a step ladder do? It usually takes us higher and if we're higher, you know, we may go, we have to come down sometimes. But anyway, last week I spoke about five steps to becoming uncommon. And just to reiterate those five steps, and I had asked you to get your notebooks out and, and write these steps down and actually do the work to understand yourself better. Now, when we write something down, we take it out of our minds and we can see it so that we can analyze it and live it. So the first one was to uh, write down what you like best and least about yourself. We're not talking about the other folks. 
it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of my change. And then write down five things that are not working that you like least about yourself and be honest with yourself. Now this was last week. And then number three was write down five things that you have passion for that, that is really important to you. Number four was write down five things again that were important to your parents about you. Think about that one. Did they decide what you're going to do and how you should live your life? Think about that. And write down five things about time-oriented goals to keep you on track of your life. So with that, I started working on that and I ran into some challenging thoughts that I had not thought about before that are in my life now. But today we're talking about the step ladder to fulfillment. And according to 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, the 15th and 16th verse, it says, do not neglect your gift, which was given you through the uh, prophetic message and when the body of the elders laid hand, their hands on you. So be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Praise God the reading of his word. Now, put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. And pay attention to yourself and your teachings. So, let's begin to climb our step ladder of fulfillment. And step one, it says we agree to act on our desires. Now, if they are of God, now, there are some desires that are not of God. Mm -hmm. And they are desires that can harm us. They stem more from personal addiction. But as spiritual people, we choose instead spiritual desires. We agree to no longer give ourselves grown-up adult excuses of why we can't do something. Today is today. Yesterday was yesterday. And guess what? Tomorrow will be tomorrow. And we'll be new in each category of our life as we walk with God. Now, you are sitting here this morning because you want to go further in your life expression. So life can be so sweet when it is spiritual at its core. So the first step on our ladder is desire. I'm going to give you seven steps on this ladder here. And acting to accept our unlimited good from God, the good will come because you are going ahead in faith and you are not moving backward in your life. I, hadn't, I ran into a friend of mine, or a guy that used to work for me, and he'd been away, and um, uh, at one time I'd asked him, I saw that he was heavy in his drinking, and uh, I said, well, what are you doing with your life? Oh, I'm one of the six-mile road bums. I said, you're what? I'm one of the six-mile road bums. I said, is that what you think of yourself? Oh, yeah, me and the fellas get together, we drink, we booze it up, and we talk about each other, and, and we get drunk, and sometimes we fight, you know? I said, oh, really? And this is what you've chosen for yourself? Yeah, I'm one of the six mile road bombs. I said, wow. Well, he went away for a job way up in Taiwas, somewhere up in Michigan there, and was up there six, no, three months. And so he wasn't around the fellas and all that, his environment, so he wasn't drinking, he wasn't arguing, he wasn't fighting, he wasn't doing all those things. And then he came back to town last week and went right back into the old way because that's the way his group 
saw him and he wanted to be with the fellas and become another six mile road bum. I said, okay. Have you thought about it? I don't want to hear it. Okay, well, you know, you can't help everyone. You have to help yourself by having a desire for something bigger and better. So, now the second step is decision. Decision. Okay, desire, number one. Decision is number two. We have to make a decision. Then we accept the responsibility that comes with the decision. We want success, but there is a lot of responsibility that comes with that. We have to be willing to accept, to stand up to that responsibility. Decisions brings about responsibility. But there is a guarantee God will help you through your decision. Now God is good all the time, and all the time, okay, he doesn't change, right? But you have to tune into that goodness for, to support you in what it is that you want to do in and with and for your life. God is good and his, he helps us so that we can help others. Now the third one is asking. I know I have a challenge with this because, you know, sometimes when you're coming up, you ask somebody and they say, no. Oh, that big word, N-O, door close up, you know. But see, now we're talking about God here now, the creator of everything that he has created you and I, okay? So I think he's got our back, our front, our top, our bottom, our allness. So as we ask, God is infinitely good in our lives. And God will never, ever, never, ever, ever, never, never, ever let you down. Yes, it's okay to ask God. And as we know, you have not because you ask not. Okay, and number three, well, the root word ask means to claim. When you claim, so remember in the cowboy days and they had the land things that they got on their buckboards and wagons and everything and they had to go out here and claim their land, you know, and they would put a stake in the ground and saying, okay, this is my space here, go claim something else, this is my land, I'm going to develop this, I have the responsibility of this plot because it's mine, I claim this. Well, asking is claiming. And we have made a decision to accept the responsibility to do whatever is necessary to allow God to come through us. We ask God to help. Know without a doubt that it can, it will come through us. Now, every time we ask, it comes with the guarantee that God will never let us down. And the only way that it can be stopped is if we stop it. In some level of our conscious or unconscious thinking, doubting, okay, that it will not happen. That is the stopper, okay? You know, you got a sink full of water, you know, and you pull that stopper out, what does it do? The water or whatever, it goes right on out, but we put that stopper in there sometimes and, and stops the flow of God's good in our lives. Number four is love. Anybody know anything about love? Anything about love? L-U-V. That's how we used to say it in the hood. I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Spell it, L-U-V. <laughs> Okay, number four is love. God is love. And if you want more of God in our lives, we have to become that love. You are the magnet that draws to you what you need or want in your lives. Think of love in a new way. It is a magnet, and it magnetizes our lives. Good coming out of the ethers comes to us because we're sending it out. So if you want love in your life, you have to become love yourself. Then it will be drawn to you 
and it can't resist you. You have the love, everything, for love is God in action. Now, it is a magnet which draws whatever you need from the spiritual realm to you. What did we say earlier that God is visible and invisible? And everything that we need is in the spiritual realm already, but we have to, by our desires, draw it to us. It is the magnet which draws whatever you need from the spiritual realm, and nothing can withstand the power of love. As you love, so shall you reap, for love never fails. If you have a problem, love is the answer. It attracts, it unifies, it protects, it always gives. You move towards your desire in love, never harming any another soul on your path. I went to my, uh, my sister has a daughter and a son, and the daughter but her husband was a twin. So the daughter had twins. So you got a girl and boy here, and they graduated uh, in June. And God bless all the graduates in our families um, that have gone through that experience, whether it was high school or going from grade school or whatever, moving up on their ladder of their lives. But anyway, we were on the top of the uh, opera house, the opera house downtown, and, and I'd never been up there before. I'd been in the opera house watching the plays and the operas and the dancing and all that, but didn't know it was, they had, went upstairs here, went through the black box, and then you come out on the roof, and here's, oh, sections, couches over here, and, and then over here is some bleachers that you can overlook Comerica Park and watch the baseball game. I'm saying, wow. And I'm looking at the tops of the city, and I'm saying, whoa, God, way up here. So I went down and took a picture of the building to see just how high it is. Wonderful. And as I'm standing there talking to my niece, here comes the man and the lady with their coat on their arm and the chair, and so they were on their way to go over here and watch the game. I said, well, people do this all the time? Yeah, well, you have to leave the house sometime and get out in the public and find out what other people are doing, but come on up, you know? Anyway, and then I came down because I'd left my camera in the car because I wanted to take some pictures of them and, and I'm walking down the street and somebody said, Larry! Well, I turn around, I see a lot of people coming, going to the game, and I'm still kept on walking, ain't nobody calling me, Larry! And I said, well, it must be me, and I didn't call me twice or call my name twice. I turn around, and somebody's waving back there a block away. And so I stand there, and they got closer and closer. It was Augustus. <laughs> Our first, first Sunday soloist. <laughs> I said, how did you recognize me? I know your walk. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, love it is. Love it is. Now the fifth step is faith. Faith is a power. Is a power. And it gets you that dream, that desire, that healing, that relationship, that financial blessing. Faith, and it may not be there yet. So if you believe so much that you, then you manifest it. You draw it to you according to what you believe you will receive. Now unquestioning faith is knowing that it is already done. Unquestioning faith. Do we doubt God? Oh, you know, I got these bills coming in. I don't have enough. I don't have enough, God, what, what, where you at, you know? Unquestioning faith, know that it is so, and expect it to happen, and it will. You tie the knot, you hang on, you know it is tight sometimes, and you know that you are anchored to something that will work in your life. A four-year-old boy said this, he says, when I'm naughty, it's my mom knowing that I'm going to be better. That is faith. It is a power that is unshakable inside of you. And we know, according to Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It is a power that is unshakable inside of you. Faith is the only thing that will give you a good night's sleep. 
you go to bed with a lot of worries on your head, you're going to lay there and toss and turn all night. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. But when you just give it over to God, let it go, then you can snuggle up into that bed and, you know, and get into that position. We all have a position when we go to sleep. Is that right? I'll do my left side here. You know, get that pillow and tuck it up under there and throw that leg over that leg and, and whatever. Then I'm gone. <laughs> you got, your, you got your, your space. People come over there and see a lump in that side of the bed. <laughs> the other side is. But anyway. <laughs> One day there was this man, he, had, he was on a street corner. He had challenges, he was an intelligent man, but he, he was only looking at life through the physical world, through the physical eyes, you know, and, and he was judging everything by his intellect. But one day he, and, but he had challenges in his life and he couldn't quite understand that. And one day he was standing on a street corner and saw a blind girl walking across a very busy intersection with her seeing eye dog. And he said to himself, the revelation, the light went on, you know, when we're asking for things, it's amazing how you have to be attuned to the answer when it comes. He said, now, if that blind girl can have that kind of faith in that dog, then I can have faith in God. It's true. So you can have faith in God, and when you do, all is going to work in you and through you. So to recap, the five steps that we've covered already was first, desire, to have a desire for something, letting God know that this is what I would like. And then decision, making that decision and holding to it, and then asking, and then love and then to become that love, because then you become the magnet for it, and then the power of faith, the unquestioning manifestation of that faith, holding on to it until it happens. Now, step six is thought. You are the thinker that thinks the thought that creates the thing. I am the thinker that thinks the thought that think creates the thing. Can you see that? Would you say that with me? I am the thinker that thinks the thought that creates the thing. Okay? One more time. I am the thinker that thinks the thoughts that creates the thing. Okay? Heavy. Because I know when I received the word to come into the ministry uh, by this voice that was in my head or in my house one day while I was studying, and there's nobody there but me and his voice is talking to me, talking about, come, I have work for you to do. And I'm saying, uh, but anyway, I said, okay, if I do this, you're going to have to see me through it. I got to go to college. I'm 60 something years young. I got to go to college and get a degree. If I do, you have to see me through it all. Through it all. I will hold on to the faith, but you've got to take me through it. And that's exactly what happened. Nobody said it was going to be smooth. It was like a roller coaster ride there at times, but held on to my faith, and here I am. Okay. Some changes had to be made because I said, oh, not me. Oh, no. Got too much history, you know, and all that. But God said, you may have a plan. There's a divine plan, higher and bigger, deeper than what you can even conceive now. Just keep saying, thank you, God. What is ours to do today? One day at a time. Hmm, now that's thought. Now, if you want to be successful, think success. And if you don't, it will never come to mind. You can sit in a lotus position and meditate and hmm all your life, but you gotta get up and do some work. You have to think about it first. It does not, it will never come to you. But anyway, the seventh step is work, okay? Work is the last step. We don't like work because too often we try to do it by ourselves. And we know that if it is to be, it's up to thee and me because I am the channel. God is spirit. We just spoke about that. God is spirit, invisible and visible. We're the visible as God moves in and through us to accomplish that that we desire. Your work, and you work, and you work, and you work, and nothing ever happens. 
Why? Because you were trying to do it all by yourself. Now, we can fall into that category many times during the day, but we need to go to work in the morning and know that we're not alone. When I woke up this morning, I knew that the breath of life, God tapped me on the heart of my soul and said, okay, get up. We've got another day to do. So we're not just going to show up. We let God, we show up for the experience and let God do the work for us. And when we do this, we will do more than our all. Because we have the power through us that can do more than anything. So what is it that you desire to do? What is God's desire for in and through you? And it because... And it will happen because you are consenting to it. God does not force himself on us. We have to be open and receptive and let, 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 and allow, and allow, and allow for that spirit to move through us. How do you spell success? W-O-R-K. I thought you were going to, the S-U-C-C-E-S-S, S-U-C-C-E-S, no. W-O-R-K. Something has to be done. But do it with God. Not alone. Now you are accepting, you are agreeing to accept the desire. That was number one. And to make the decision. That was number two. For success. And to ask and ask again. To be re-guided. Redirected. To, and then for it, to make love the law of your life to make love the law of your life, and then to have faith as never before in yourself, in God, working through you to change your thought process and then do the work. So sitting down in the lotus position with your hands upward will never produce your dreams. It will focus on it. You have the God-given gifts as a spiritual people to bring from the fourth dimension into the third dimension what we are willing to co-create with God. God has created everything, but we are co-creating by holding on to that thought, that desire that God has placed within our souls. So sitting in the low vision can be done at the very start of your dreams, but you have to go through desire, Decision, asking, love, faith, thought, work, and your dream will be drawn to you magnetically. Thank you, God. Let us pray. Would you just gently close your eyes for a moment? Taking a deep breath. I know I've given you quite a bit to take in today, but these are seeds being planted in the garden of your mind and the garden of your soul. Dear God, we pray to open our God-given implanted imagination and understanding within the perception of our human minds. We pray that you will give us the desires of our hearts and that we will decide on those desires by walking toward them in positive movement. Daily, dear God, we ask you to help to energize, to guide and direct so that we can make manifest the desires of our hearts. We move towards the desires for the good of ourselves and all others. And we move towards our desires in love, never harming another soul on our path. Our energy of movement is fueled by our faith. We have great faith in you, God, to produce miracles in our lives. And we pray that you will make us thinkers and infill us with your higher thoughts in the name and through the power and the nature of Jesus the Christ. We say, amen. Thank you. And this is our 
wonderful time to be able to give. Because we know as we give, we open ourselves to receive even more of God's great good. But there is a song that we... Want to do that? Pull that out? Um, yeah. This is a requested song. <laughs> and it has choreography, too. I love movement. We've been sitting here for a while, so we're going to move up. And it's... You want to stand? And it's called... Uh, How's it go? Oh, got it. <laughs> it's called Give and He'll Give It Back to You. Give and He'll Give It Back to You. Give and He'll Give It Back to You. How? Press down. You can move a little bit. Shaken together, running over, back in good measure. He'll give it back to you. Okay, got it. Give and he'll give it back to you. Give and he'll give it back to you. Give and he'll give it back to you. How? Press down. Shaking together, running over. Back in good measure. He'll give it back to you. Take it up a notch. Uh, caught you off guard, huh? Give and he'll give it back to you with energy. Give and he'll give it back to you. Give and he'll give it back to you. How? Press down. Shaking together, running over. Back in good measure. He'll give it back to you. One more time. Give and he'll give it back to you. Give and he'll give it back to you. Give and he'll give it back to you. How press on, shaking together, running over, back in good measure. He'll give it back. To you. And then we affirm divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you, God.
raise me up so I can stand on mountains. Ha! Glory to God. Thank you, God, for, these, for this wonderful day and everyone that has come out today and all those that are in our streaming family that are looking on. But we bless these love offerings that have come in today and bless everyone that has given, for we know that they're blessed, they're blessed, they're blessed, and we are blessed also. In the name and nature of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Do we have any first timers here today? <laughs> Won't you stand? <laughs> Won't you stand? First time. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'll start over here. Don't sit down yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you are? Uh, my name is Brian. And this is not on? Testing, 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 testing. And you're who? My name is Brian. And who do you know? How do you come here today? Uh, my mom. Your mother? Yeah. Ah. And who is this lovely young lady here? Uh, Demetri Dem Demetrius. Demetrius. Oh, I'll call her T because that's good. Name. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome. And over here, don't sit down yet. We want to give you a unity blessing. All right, I'm coming your way. Don't look shy. And you are Sarah. Sally. I remembered your name. Welcome. Thank you. Lillian. Lillian, wonderful. And? Mary Jean. Who? Mary Jean. Mary Jean. God bless you, love. And? Jennifer. Jennifer. I like that. Debbie. Debbie. All right, we, Debbie, are you here? Debbie Bidmar? We have a Debbie here. <laughs> Wonderful. Let us give, rub our hands together here. Rub our hands. <laughs> and get that energy going and give them the unity blessing. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. Ready? Y'all can stand because we're going to sing our peace song afterwards. So get on up. <laughs> All right. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. Amen. Now join hands and let's sing our peace song. Let's form a circle as we can. Joining everybody's hand. There's somebody in the back row there with an empty hand. Come on up or come on around. You don't have to sit in the seat anymore. Uh, <laughs> come get in the circle. Are we all joined? We're all one in spirit, right? All right, now we can sing our peace song. Now he is and it has begun with me. Help me out here. Now there is peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as creator family. Family, all are we now. Now we walk with each other in perfect harmony. Now peace begins with me. Let this be the moment now with, with every step I take. Let this be my joy is to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Now there is peace on earth and it has begun. We
And as we prepare to leave this sacred sanctuary, and don't forget to go over Greg and Peg this evening, it's going to be a wonderful time. We just bless this day and know that as we move through it, the love of God moves in and through us. And so we say together, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us, for wherever we are, God is, and all is with now hug somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh.